Those of us humans who are Confucianists believe that people should not lie, cheat, steal, or kill. In his book, The Wisdom of Confucius, Lin Yutang explains that the strongest doctrine of Confucianism is that the measure of people is people. It is a humanist system that believes in the good of each human being, and it has a certain viewpoint concerning the conduct of life and of society. Our human nature includes right and wrong, respect and piety, righteousness, wisdom, and moral consciousness. Sometimes we ignore or neglect them, but if you look inside yourself, you will see them. A great person is one who has not lost the heart of a child. Each person can begin to be a moral person by simply following the instincts of his or her own innate human nature because people are moral by nature. You do not have to look for perfection in divine ideals. It is within yourself. Confucianism is interested in human relationships, not in mysticism nor spirits. The love of humanity is a state of mind that, when attained, makes one feel at peace. All persons are created equal in goodness of heart. The golden rule is to put yourself in the place of others. You will not act badly toward others if you first imagine that this act is being done to yourself. Confucius explained that this was the definition of a true person. He said that before you act, you should apply the personal test. How would you feel yourself? You can find the answer within yourself. Everyone knows these rules because they are within each of us but it is still difficult to live a totally pure life. Confucius was the founder who lived in China 2,500 years ago. During his lifetime, the empire was collapsing and many small states were warring. It was a period of moral and political chaos, but it was also a time of great intellectual freedom and thought. Many persons were thinking of ways to bring peace and order to the chaos. Some thinkers, like Lao Tse and Jun Tse, suggested that we abandon civilization completely, while others, like Buddha, taught the oneness of the universe. A child learns to be humble by having respect and courtesy for its older siblings and parents, and learns to be a good citizen by obeying its father. While we are children, if we acquire a habit of love and respect for our parents, then we will extend this mental attitude toward the authority of the state. Good sons, daughters, brothers, and sisters cannot help but comprise an orderly and peaceful nation. When the family knows kindness, then the nation will too. Being a kind parent is preparation for being a kind ruler. In this way, Political and social order develop naturally from the proper behavior of the family. Confucius taught that society consists of fathers, brothers, friends, and the sovereign. Confucianism seeks to build a rationalized social and political order by duplicating the order of the family. The nation is ordered by the family, and the family is ordered by a proper personal life. Do you think that this outlook would improve your own life and government today? It is a positive outlook with a sense of responsibility toward all other humans and toward society in general. The teachings of Confucius are most comparable to the teachings of Moses. Each considered their teachings to be both religious and civil, and that both these things are aspects of a whole life. In the fullest realization of Confucianism, no laws or government would be necessary because everyone would be living in a moral harmony. If you threaten people with laws and punishment, then they will stay out of jail, but they will have no sense of honor, only shame. If you govern people by virtue and propriety, then they will have honor and respect. Propriety, respect for elders and for authority, love for other humans, and a daily practice of simple good manners will result in social and political order. Still today, 
this philosophy of essential human relationship is the foundation of the Chinese ethos. It also means that the well-functioning society is more important than the happiness of one individual. Confucius believed that authority should govern by example and that moral people make moral government. He said that emperors are human and that anyone can be an emperor. The emperor must rule by virtue, not by force. The authorities must be kind and gentle, possess moral principles, love learning, be calm and at ease, have contempt for material luxuries, and be careful of their own conduct because they know that they provide an example to others. He said that the sovereign should be a cultivated gentle person, like Plato's philosopher king. The power of moral example is illustrated by giving money to thieves so that they don't have to steal it. If the authorities choose what is good for humans, then there will be general confidence and peace. Choosing what is bad for a human results in a struggle for profit, robbery, or murder. The character of the ruler determines the fate of the nation. Poverty and suffering should be avoided. The Analex is a collection of moral maxims. Some of us who live in the Western world have a mistaken idea that Confucianism is a collection of little sayings. A Christian is most concerned with Jesus and God and has many sayings to develop this concern. A Confucian is mostly concerned with behaving right so that the nation will be right and has many sayings to develop this concern. The sayings of the Analect are properly read at a rate of about one per day to allow one time to ponder its truth and to see its application in daily life. Education civilizes the people, establishes good social customs, and brings order to the country. People have a good nature, a force is needed to make it otherwise. Education and culture prevent a clouding of our good nature. Confucianism understands the crucial role of the teacher and has many guidelines for schools and teachers. People have a small self-concern for food and material possessions, but a great self-concern for ideas. When we nourish our ideas, then we lose interest in material possessions. Confucius also knew that rituals have a unifying and respect-generating effect on participants. Music comes from the heart and produces a sense of joy. Ritual and music set the heart straight. Everywhere on the planet, at all times and places, all of us human beings agree with this. In China today, it is still the case that harmony in the community is considered to be crucial in that the lives of everyone depends on the continued existence of the mutual society. Disharmony means an end to the mutual society. It is more important to maintain harmony than to make a disturbance over an imperfection, although it is also one's duty to publicly announce the misconduct of a superior, even if this puts your career at risk.